All right, hope everyone's having a good day. And today I have another messy video for you. So everyone enjoyed that first video so much. This is gonna be Legends Talk About Messy Part Two. And I have a few new videos in here, a few videos that were just released very recently. So hopefully I have a few on here that you guys haven't heard before or haven't seen before. Also, we're getting close to that 3000 subscriber mark. So thank you to all the people who have already subscribed. I really appreciate it. We're gonna just keep going for the next goal. But please hit that sub button if you haven't already. Hit that like button and hit that notification bell. Let's just get straight into the video. At this age. He was a very small kid. Yeah, you know, he didn't speak. He was very, very shy. The first training session we had with Leo I was playing a bit more of a defensive midfielder and we were doing this exercise of one against one. In my head, I'm thinking that I'm going to get the ball easy, you know, from him because I like to go on the floor and I like to tackle. But then I was seeing that he was coming with... Like the speed was not normal. He was coming very, very fast at me. And I was already shocked because I remember falling on the floor. You know, uh, I lost ability and, and, and he scored the goal. So from that moment, I said, hold on a second, we need to take this, this boy very, very seriously. For me, genius, I think is the word that you choose. And I think the word is, is correct, genius. Um, lots of work, I don't know. I'm not there to, to, to see. Um, a fantastic social life, it looks, yes. You don't, you don't see, you don't listen, you don't read many things about Messi um, wrongdoing in his uh, personal, in his social life. So it looks like everything together. Before it was not that normal to see players at that age coming from so far. If you were very good, they could take you from somewhere in Spain. So of course, you know, seeing someone coming from so, so far away at such a young age, we all thought, wow, this boy must be something really special. You need to be mentally very, very strong. You need to have a, a special character, otherwise you don't succeed. There is so many moments where you feel weak, where you, you know, your, your head mislead you a little bit, that you want to go back to your family, you want to go back to your habits, to your friends. So I'm sure it was very tough, but I want to believe that, you know, we were good kids as well, and we tried always to, to be next to him and, and help him as, as much as we could. You know, no more words about this, 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 this guy. Uh, genius is the word for me. And for me, a question that I put in the other day, when I was in another, um, uh, television channel is, is the question that I'm going to keep for a few time. Which Barcelona are we going to have when Messi decides to go home? I went to Arsenal and three or four months later, I had like two days off, so I went back and my dad told me, listen, just here close to Barcelona, they are playing a tournament, your ex-team, and they're playing against Real Madrid. So I said, oh my God, I'd love to go and, and, and watch. Leo was playing as a number 10 and I've never seen anything like this. He was taking on players, he was getting past players, but with so much ease. They had to follow him so hard to stop him. I told my dad, I said, oh my God, Leo, how, he looks so much stronger as well. It's like he just made that change physically that no one could stop him. And that was the first day that I, I said, well, I don't think I've seen anyone play like this at, at, at this age. Sí, no, yo me acuerdo, él, yo me acuerdo la primera vez estábamos comiendo y, y claro, yo no, no sabía quién era, claro. no sabía quién era. Y la primera vez me acuerdo y era... Él estaba sentado, me acuerdo, a la derecha mía, estaba Garay de frente mío y Formica al lado mío, el que juega de tres. Sí, Lautaro. Lautaro. Entonces, en un momento estaban hablando de las, una zapatilla. Y Leo en un momento dice, sí, en Estados Unidos no sé qué escucho. Y yo decía, ¿y este? ¿Viste sí, que cuando decía de dónde? Dónde? Oh, claro. claro, entonces yo, ni, no, yo no, no, estaba, no miraba mucho. Yo miraba partidos, pero de acá, de fútbol argentino, sí, sí, no, sí. no miraba mucho. Y me dice... Y le digo yo, ¿cómo, cómo te llamas vos? A Leo no. le digo. Y Leo se acuerda, ¿eh? Y que te la de facturar cada vez que sí, se No, ve, no, ¿no? se cae de risa. risa. Claro, claro. Entonces me vivo como diciendo, me dice, eh, Leonel. Ah, ¿viste? Yo, ah, igual que yo, casi, ¿viste? Claro, Leonel. Leonel sí. Y tu apellido le digo, ¿viste? 
<risa> Messi me dice. Yeah. Pues un diálogo para una Messi. película. Sí, le digo, pero tu apellido. Messi. Ah. Y entonces, claro, yo me quedé como diciendo, bien. Y por qué dice, ¿qué? ¿No, te, no sabes quién es? Y después ahí yo, por la noticia, vi que había un jugador de Barcelona claro. y dije, este es este. Dije, y ahí, claro, fue la noche esa que comí y cuando ya empezamos a entrenar dije, este vuela. Claro, y después, bueno, ahí, de ahí él se cagó de risa conmigo, nos empezamos a caer de risa y, y ahí pegamos buena onda y después Tojo nos pone juntos en la habitación y sí. ya... Ah, compartí una habitación ahí. En y el... ya compartí una habitación de 2005. Sabemos que eres uno de los jugadores, tal vez el jugador más técnico del mundo, pero te, te voy a dar un reto. ¿Me puedes decir cinco jugadores que son más técnicos que, que tú? ¿Más técnico que yo? Bueno, más que yo... No lo sé si puedo, si puedo decir eso con toda la humildad del mundo, pero me pongo ahí entre los, los que son más técnicos hoy en el fútbol, para mí. Eh, son Messi, para mí hoy, un jugador que, que quería estar junto y jugar, el, claro que es Messi, eh, porque es el número uno, es lo más grande de todos y creo que todos los clubes, todos los jugadores eh, le encantan y bueno, todos querían jugar con él. They took our soul and Messi was the main ingredient. Hi guys, we're talking about Messi and how great he is and how he embarrassed us at Wembley and en Roma y what not. I've got to put myself through that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Rome. That one you felt we could have and should have maybe won, maybe. When Messi scores the header in the Premier League against some players, or even the Champions League against some players, no disrespect, I'd gamble on their the lack of ability to be able to get the ball past me. I'd done that in the Champions League final, and the problem was the person on the ball was Xavi. You know, you got to know your players, you know you're dealing with. And then he put it on six months for Messi. He scored a, an outrageous header, really. They, he, he hasn't scored many of them in his career, but he's done it in the big moment, and that separates the good from the great. We'd played against him before, and we'd locked him down. But this was a different Messi. This was Messi who had more freedom to run around and be central, whereas before he, he, could, he was really stuck wide, so you could pin him down a bit. Still great, but when he was allowed that freedom to be able to move and pop up anywhere and surprise you, it's like unplayable. Like, ridiculous. And, and he was actually better at Wembley. Like, I remember standing on the pitch of Scolzi and watching them go and lift the trophy and just going, just, we just need to get off there because they've just took, they've took our soul. And Messi was the main ingredient. He was the player that I was meant to be able to get up against. He just played away from you. And then all of a sudden he'd turn up, bang, he's there. Like, just a, a wonderful footballer, man. Just like, you can't even, you can't put it into words how good he is. Quite a somber moment. The feeling of being deflated and dejected and devastation, and your heart's been ripped out on the pitch the way it had been. I'll tell you one thing, I was probably the drunkest I've ever been, probably for my, both of them finals we lost. The party, party was crazy, because you're drowning your sorrows. You try and break down situations and try and say you shoulda, coulda, woulda. But when it's happening at the speed that it happens and when you've got a player like Messi who makes decisions quicker, more decisive and more effective than anybody else, it's almost like impossible. Prime time Lionel Messi, unplayable. Years, so I played against him many times when he was coached by different uh, managers um, in different positions on the pitch. And the only thing I can say is that progressively he was always better and better and better. My Messi is the best player I've ever seen in my life because he's a competitor, he's an animal. And now we pass the ball and we take a look. When you pass the ball, attack the. You have to score those guys. Messi passed the ball and go the machine, smell the goal. And you have to cross it, you have to run. I would be would be a dream for me. I would I, I would love to 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 not not only Kevin, you know, all all the players I had in the past to achieve the level from Messi. So I would like would be a massive thing for my my teams because we would win a lot of games. I said many many times since I came here when I left Barcelona and I went to Bayern Munich and now in Manchester City never. Never ask Lionel Messi to come to join Bayern Munich here when I was manager. I never went to the clubs, both clubs, and said I want this player. Never. So because I am, I know how important is this guy for 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 FC Barcelona. 
message number nine, number ten, number eleven, number seven, number six, number five, number four. Pep, this is a great international break for Raheem Sterling, who is getting more and more attention still. People saying that he is now nearly at that Messi Ronaldo level. How near do you think he is to those two? I'm so happy for him, for the way he's playing here and with the national team. Hopefully, he cannot read too much and he cannot listen these kind of things. Will be good for him. Why do you feel that's so dangerous for him to listen to? Would that not help his because confidence? Nobody can compare with Cristiano and Messi. Nobody. Messi is a part. So he's a guy who scored 60 goals every season since the last eight, nine, ten years. So, uh, so he's a guy not just of that. It's just how, the way he plays football. In the past, I hear many, many times that guy is like Messi. That guy is like Messi. That guy is like Messi. It, it's not. It's not possible. The pass is, is for just one. The pass is Messi. <laughs> I was curious because we shared this stage 15 years, yeah. me and him. I don't know if it's ever happened in football. Mm. The same two guys in the same stage all the time. Yeah. So it's not easy, <laughs> no. as, as you know. Uh, and of course, we have a good relationship. We, we have not had a dinner together uh, yet. In, but really? I hope in the future. <laughs> You're in, in Monaco future. tonight. <laughs> it is nice. Of course, I miss, I miss to play in, in Spain. Uh, we have that battle the yeah. last 15 years, which is, is good. Uh, he pushed me and I pushed him as yeah. well. So it's good to be, in a, to be part of history of football. I'm there and uh, of course he's there as Penalty. well. They mentioned greatest players in the world. You, you just have to tell me what it was like saving a penalty against Messi. I, we, when we play him, you notice like, what a player he is. There's not many situations where you come off the pitch and you go, we talk like the children. Like, I know it's not, we're not in awe of him, but you've just got to be honest. Because <laughs> yeah, you just see the guy wandering around, totally oblivious to the game sometimes, and then all of a sudden, bang, just... <laughs> and, he's, and he's creating something or he's scoring. You know, he, last year he put one past me. He came across the box and he, and he like, dubbed it with the outside of his foot kind of here. But he knew exactly what was going on. Mm. And uh, to say, well, to save his penalty is, is a good feeling, a very good feeling. And to feel like I, you know, because he put one past me last year as well, I kind of worked out in my head where where's he going to put a pressure penalty. And mm -hmm. he went down the middle, which was very unlike him. But again, it was a, quite a big pressure on this penalty. And I kind of put my eggs in, in the basket, tried to wait as long as, as possible and went the right way. I remember watching Messi training. Everybody was talking about him, the new kid back then. He showed that he was going to have a great future. For me, it was a joy to have played with him and to see the history that he's making. I didn't teach him anything. He already knew it all. All I did was try to help him in any way that I could. And it wasn't just me. Everybody on the team, Puyol, Deco, everyone tried to help make sure that he was happy and did what he loved the most. He's a great friend and I'm very happy that I assisted his first goal, which makes me part of the history of a historic player. I think these players have all been uh, the best in their time. Pelé was the best in his time, Maradona was the best in his time, and now Messi, like Romario or Ronaldo, in their time.